on a perfect day for a hike with a clear view of the Sandia Mountains. I'm Rosalinda Roman and this is New Mexicast. Welcome back to New Mexicast, everyone. I was thinking about this the other day, and if you count my broadcasting experience and the time I've worked here on New Mexicast, I have been reporting for over 14 years. Now, I don't tell you that so you can guess at my age. I tell you that because in all of that time, there really have only been a handful of stories that I felt compelled to tell, stories that really grabbed me and made me feel like I had to at least try to do them justice. Well, this is one of those stories, actually a series of stories, because this is the finale, part four, of a series on a Holocaust survivor and her family. Now, if you have watched the series, one through three, you've met Gabrielle Falk and her son, Stephen Falk. You learned about her childhood and her parents, Walter and Eleanor Freund. Well, now you're about to learn how her parents survived the death camps and what Swiss chocolate had to do with it. This episode and technical support for NewMexicast.com provided by IndieLab.org, where independent media lives. IndieLab offers completely free blogs and websites for media creators. If you're a video blogger, musician, photographer, filmmaker, or podcaster, IndieLab is your answer. From her radiant smile and warm disposition, you would never know the adversity Gabrielle Falk has faced in her 85 years. While she survived the Holocaust, her uncle Hermann Freund, seen in this family film from the early 1930s, and other relatives were murdered by the Nazis. To honor them, Gabrielle is now recording some of her own memories of the Holocaust. And in keeping with her positive outlook, much of her interview focuses on the lucky breaks that kept her and her parents alive. Gabrielle's own life was saved because her parents sent her and her brother Andreas to a school in Switzerland, where virtual strangers took them in throughout the war. I told my girlfriend um, that I might not come back after autumn break and she told her mother was a widow with three daughters she came back to school the next day and said my mother says if you can um, pay for the pension anymore you can come live with us she was very nice and I didn't quite believe it because you know it was just the daughter's announcement you know it wasn't like a, a grown-up telling you but that actually is what happened after everything stopped and the war broke out. So she took you in just she just, out of the kindness of her heart? Just, yeah, that but this was another great piece of luck. And when it comes to her father, Walter Freund, Gabrielle says it was another stroke of luck that kept him alive at a French concentration camp. Well, at the Swiss school, Gabrielle made a friend whose older sister was a nurse. Mayan had volunteered with the Red Cross or the YMCA to go into these camps and hand out canned milk and chocolate to the children. And her parents, she was in that camp and her parents wrote to her that my father was there. And she met him, he had a couple of conversations and one night she saw him in the lineup for the trains. And she stood next to the deputy commander of the camp whose wife adored Swiss chocolate and she had given her Swiss chocolate a few times when she came back from Switzerland with her provisions. So she said to this deputy commander, isn't that one too old for a labor camp? And so I guess thinking of his wife and the chocolate, he said to her, well maybe you're right and substitutes it somebody from the next day's list. And that is how my father didn't get gassed. And goosebumps. I'm sure your family... This was just incredible. I mean, that was just such an amazing thing. But it wasn't until several years later that she and her brother were reunited with their father at a train station in Switzerland, a day Gabrielle will never forget. We knew what train he was coming, and my brother, who was still in school in Togen, was allowed to take a day off from school and came on a very early train and I went to pick him up. And then the two of us walked around. It was early February and the days were short. 
and uh, it was a dark, rainy day, and he had he had been fairly tall, and he had shrunk a lot, and he was wearing that same little backpack that he had brought from Germany. It was all he had. And, and that, after a few moments, you kind of got used to his face again, you know. So that was a pretty amazing event. But the reunion was bittersweet because so much had already been lost. While at Camp de Gours, Gabrielle's mother, Eleanor Freund, managed to escape by jumping into a river. My mother had discovered in the camp in Gours where there was no barbed wire, but there was a river. And she jumped into that river. I think she intended to end her life, except she didn't. And she was pulled out some ways downstream and taken to a hospital, which had the closest hospital, which was a psychiatric hospital and was diagnosed as uh, paranoid schizophrenic and uh, for the rest of her life was always in institutions. So ironically, while most of the prisoners at Camp de Gours were sent to Auschwitz to be executed, Eleanor's apparent suicide attempt kept her alive. Still, when you consider the cost, it's clear she too was a Holocaust victim. When I visited her in France, she did not recognize me as her daughter. You know, she used the German Z, the polite form in German, and she knew in her hallucinations, she knew about her daughter. She thought her daughter was somewhere in South America, and some other time her daughter was in Zurich. She had me married to my very first boyfriend, who happened to have lived in Zurich at the time. So it was very difficult. While the memories she shares are at times painful, now that her parents are both gone, Gabrielle doesn't focus on the sadness. She is too busy counting her blessings. I miss him so much. Yeah, because you were really... She's really close to him. Very close to him, right? Yeah. And by sharing these incredible stories now, Gabrielle honors those that did not survive and celebrates every bit of good fortune that has come her way. With the Falk family story for New Mexicast, I'm Rosalinda Roman. <sighs> And there you have it, a very small glimpse at the incredible life story of Gabrielle Falk, a story I could not have told without the help of her son, Stephen Falk, who really is their family historian. He helped me gather all of that information, the pictures, the film. Without Stephen, it would not have happened. So thank you so much to you, Stephen. And thank you to all of you who are watching around the world. We have a viewer in Japan that commented. We also have some folks watching in Israel. So shalom to you. I am so glad we have this international audience. It's pretty exciting. And you know, you can follow New Mexicast in other social media, like on Twitter at www.twitter.com slash New Mexicast. Or you can also find us on Facebook. We have a page on Facebook. Just search for New Mexicast, and once you find the page, become a fan. It helps me out tremendously. By the way, everyone, I wanted to introduce you to our new social media manager here for New Mexicast. Her name is Rebecca Rodriguez, and I wanted to introduce you, but we don't have a lot of time, and you'll see for obvious reasons why that is. So, uh, hello, Rebecca. How are you? Good. How are you? Nice to see you again. Thank you. Good to see you. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm retired from the Army after having done 20 years, and I'm now working part-time and going to school for something in the IT field. And I'm a mommy of two girls. There's Sophie and Leah somewhere in the background. <laughs> and you've got some magic going on right now. I can see that. Where'd the magic go? 
the magic is right there. You can see she's got a magic wand. Pretty exciting. All right, well, I can tell you're busy, as am I. So just wanted to introduce you. Thank you so much. And you've already been a tremendous help getting us viewers here on New Mexico. So thank you. You're welcome. It's been fun. Okay, we'll see you. Bye. Okay, bye. Everyone say bye. 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 <laughs> and by the way, did I mention she's my sister? So be very nice to Rebecca and drop her a line at social at newmexicast.com. I think she'd love to hear from you. Tell her how much we appreciate her working with us because I really could use the help. And by the way, I wanted to tell you, I mentioned about that survey that uh, was broken a while back. Well, it is now up and running. I have a new survey, actually. It's much shorter, simple, to the point. Even if you took the other survey, please consider taking this one so I can get an idea of who's actually watching all of these episodes. Uh, just go to www.newmexicast.com, or if you're on our email subscriber list, I'm going to send you the link. So look for that, and please keep watching, tell a friend, and thank you to all of you. I'm Rosalinda Roman. Like a dream I New Mexico's theme song is New Mexico by Dorian Spencer. Additional support for New Mexico is provided by... All right, here we go. I'd like to do it like this. Would anyone mind? <laughs> We're going to do a little uh, interview with Aunt, with Aunt Becky. No, I'm going to. You guys are just going to be able to sit with me if you want. Okay. No, I want to do it. Oh, you want to do the interview? Really? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Yeah, do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> but about yourself. <laughs> okay. If you um, can. <laughs> I'm. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I'm a mom. Bye. Sophie, they're blowing you kisses, you and Leah, and Aunt Becky. She's blowing them back, but she's kind of low. Try again. Thank you. Mwah. Te quiero. Mm -hmm.